Hello Eurovision fans, thank you so much for coming to my channel. Today I want to try something a bit new. I asked you in the community tab of my channel whether you would be interested in some latest news of Eurovision 2024 videos and 85% of you said yes, they were interested, so I'm gonna try it out. I do these regular chart update videos, so this will be kind of similar, me talking about and summarizing what has happened in the last two weeks in the world of Eurovision. You can see it's still 44 weeks to go, such a long time till the final of Eurovision 2024, because we now have the dates. But let's go step by step. The big news yesterday was that Malmö will be the host city of Eurovision 2024. The EBU and the Eurovision channel on YouTube had an announcement video announcing Malmö as the next host city. Malmö will thus host Eurovision for a third time after 1992 and 2013. And of course, 2013 was the year after Lorene won and 2024 is also the year after Lorene won. So apparently after Lorene wins, Malmö gets to host. And Malmö won against its bid against Stockholm, Göteborg and Ernst Kölzwick, which I kind of wanted to win just so I and lots of journalists and fans had to pronounce this name, Ernst Kölzwick. If you're Swedish, let me know if that is how you pronounce it. Probably not. Um, it would have been the northernmost city to host a Eurovision, which would have been cool, but I also think it's kind of small. We've had Eurovisions in Mill Street, but no real modern Eurovision has been held in such a small town. I've seen uh, criticism of the choice of Malmö. I also asked you in the community tab of my channel and 58% of you are happy with Malmö as host city. 30% are not happy and 12% said who this. So they don't care, apparently. I have to say I don't really mind either way because the show is what is important and Sweden knows how to put on a good Eurovision show, I think. So the city doesn't matter as much. The criticisms I saw for it not being Stockholm, which is mostly because the Globen Arena is being renovated and the Friends Arena is occupied by someone called Taylor Swift with a concert, at least on one of the dates that the final was supposed to be held. They were thinking about putting up a big tent to have Eurovision. They last talked about that in when Germany hosted to do that in Berlin. I don't think it's sustainable. I don't think it's probably acoustically a good idea. So I don't think that would have been a great choice, to be honest. People criticize it also because they say that Stockholm has had it three times, Malmö has had it two times up until now, and that's why they wanted Göteborg, because it only has hosted one Eurovision. But I mean, the reason to choose one or the other is mostly logistical and whether the arena is available. So I don't think SVT, the Swedish National Broadcaster or the EBU are thinking about who has had it the most times. Um, there's also criticism because Malmö is kind of a dangerous city. It's, I think, one of the most dangerous in Sweden. And I've seen from some Swedes that they are not happy that they have to pay for the hosting and the whole show. But a lot of the income will go to Denmark because Goethe, uh, Copenhagen, sorry, not Göteborg, Copenhagen is just a bridge away from Malmö and lots of fans will seek uh, accommodation in Copenhagen. I think it's also a bit cheaper. So that's the main um, like criticisms I saw of Malmö as host city, but overall I think it's fine. In the announcement video by the EBU, it's Petra Mede that says, welcome to Malmö from 2013, of course, but I kind of hope that she might be back. I know she doesn't work for the Swedish national broadcaster anymore, but still I would love to see her back and getting close to Katie Boyle's record of hosting four times. And the dates have also been announced. The semifinals will be held on the 7th and 9th of May, and the grand final will be on the 11th of May. So the second semifinal will be on Europe Day, which is a nice touch. So it's Malmö, we know that now. However, we also know that these countries, Austria, Ireland, Israel, Cyprus, Germany, 
Denmark, Norway, the Netherlands, Iceland, France, Spain, Moldova, Malta, Italy, Sweden and Finland have all confirmed that they will be participating in Eurovision 2024. Really cool, especially Moldova. I don't think they ever confirmed this early. So they're really passionate about it. And of course, we know that Luxembourg will return. I have some news about that in a minute. Um, however, this week we also got a confirmation from Estonia, which brings the total number of confirmed and returning countries to 18, which is quite a good number, I think, for the time of year we are in at the moment. As I said, 44 more weeks till Eurovision. By the way, Spain has announced that there will be a press conference on the 26th, I think, of July about the setup of Benidorm and all the details. I'm really excited to hear about that. Ireland has already started uh, accepting songs and Luxembourg has some news, but I'll talk about that in a minute. There have been no withdrawals up until now. I think lots of fans think that Romania might not return, but we haven't heard from them. And we have confirmation from Bosnia and Herzegovina, unfortunately, because they have still have the financial issues and that's why they cannot return. They are, I think, suspended because of debt that they owe to the EBU. Then Slovakia has said that there's not enough interest and also no financial resources, although I think that the financial resources would be there if there were more interest. So I think Czechia winning is the only way we get Slovakia into the contest again, I feel like. So I hope that will happen at some point. And Liechtenstein, the national broadcaster, it's not really a national broadcaster, but the only broadcaster really they have in Liechtenstein has announced that they are not seeking EBU membership. And so Liechtenstein will not debut in the coming years, I don't think. Then one thing that I find really interesting is Monaco, because in September they will found a new TV channel, um, which will be the national broadcaster in Monaco. And so we might see them, maybe not in 2024, but maybe the years after that they might apply for EBU membership and Monaco might be back. I think maybe they are looking at how Luxembourg will do and decide based on that, but I would love to have Monaco and Luxembourg back at Eurovision, of course. And Esti Laule is back. This has also been announced yesterday. They said that they will have some exciting news and innovations. I think it isn't a surprise that Esti Laule is back because it's a very popular show in Estonia and quite successful in choosing the Estonian entry. So excited about that. They say that some pre-qualification rounds might already be happening in autumn this year. The earlier the better for me, I think. I uh, really want the season to start as soon as possible, probably with Albania though. And then Luxembourg is back, as I said, and they have announced that they will have a national final on the 24th of January in 2024. Really excited because I think a lot of people thought that Luxembourg might be a new San Marino where people from all over Europe can participate in the national final or also because Luxembourg in the past has shopped for singers. Their five winners were four people from France and Vicky Leandros from Greece. So I think people kind of expected that to happen again. At least I did a little bit. However, the rules of the national final state that you have to be from Luxembourg have lived three years in Luxembourg or have very, very strong ties to the Luxembourg music scene. I find that really cool and interesting. They really want to showcase their own culture, their own music scene. And that's really cool, I think. There's no language requirement, so you can submit songs in any language, really. I kind of hoped for French or Luxembourgish, maybe, or maybe even German, one of the national languages. But looking at what the Netherlands and Belgium are doing, and Germany as well, it might be a song in English, I'm pretty sure. Even though I think in the national final, we might have some songs in other languages as well. There are three categories. The first is singers that already have a song. The second category is singers without a song. And the third is songwriters without a singer. So I think they're trying to match second and third group to find a best the best entry and the best fit and then also if you're a singer songwriter you can apply in the first category quite excited about that it will be held at i had it here the most luxembourgish name of a city i've ever seen esch sur alcet so kind of a combination of german and french and luxembourgish i guess so quite excited we'll see on the 24th of january who will represent luxembourg at their return after 
30 years, long, long time. And then there have been reports in Aftonbladet, a Swedish tabloid, that SVT is thinking about cutting the Eurovision Grand Final by up to one hour. I think um, this has created a lot of commotion in the fandom because people don't want their favorite show to be shorter. I have thought about how they could do that. I don't think they can really cut it by one hour because there are just too many elements that need to be in the show. I think that the flag parade might be one thing that could be cut if you want to really cut down the time. I don't think it's 100% necessary. I do like it because it gives the whole thing a more Olympic feel, a very bringing countries together feel, and I do love that. And I think for the general audience that don't know the artists yet, it might also be a, a good teaser to know, oh, this funny looking person comes up or this great looking guy is going to sing a ballad probably and I want to watch the show to see that. So I think... That aspect is also something they should think about before cutting it. I do think that the intervals and the, especially the voting time after the songs could be much shorter. I'm, I kind of think that 90% of people vote in the first 10 minutes after lines are open. And I don't think that a lot of votes come in after that. The EBU would have these numbers. And I think that's the point where you can really cut some maybe 10, 15 minutes. I don't really see an hour. I really hope they don't cut the time of the songs because first of all, it's not very efficient to cut the time in total. And also we need three minutes of songs. And then I'm a bit scared that they might do something with the jury votes and kind of combine them like they do with the televote or cut the time even shorter. And I really wouldn't like that because the 12 points, the going to the different countries and the banter that happens, hello Madrid, hello whatever, is part of Eurovision history and Eurovision traditions. And cutting that just to save some time, I would really not be happy with. I do think that in the interval period, you could shorten it. And I know that the general audience that are not fans sometimes think that it's very, very long, the interval act. So you can really change that. And with the jury votes already decided on the day before, you can start giving out the jury votes um, right after people stopped voting for the televote. You might think about letting people televote during the jury vote as well. So maybe some people might be motivated to support the song that they liked when they see that the juries aren't really going for it. But I don't really think it would be fair because you kind of already see where the competition is going. And so people who like the song that is now in the jury vote in last place, they won't pick up the phone during the jury vote. So not sure I like this idea. Actually, I don't like this idea very much. Let me know in the comments what you would cut if you had to and what you think a good time for the Eurovision final might be. I think three and a half hours is kind of a good time to get to. I think four hours is a bit long for the general audience, but yeah, three and a half seems like a good time to me, duration to me. Then I have some chart news. I'm going to do the chart update tomorrow. Don't worry. But this is also news. So Tattoo by Lorene is doing really well on many, many charts. It has around one and a half million streams a day still. It's going up in France, but I'll talk about that in my chart update video. It has been certified gold in Switzerland and Belgium. It's a giant hit in Belgium. And I'm really happy about that. Gustav's Because of You has been certified platinum in Belgium. A great success. I'm so happy for him i think the first single of his that is so successful so eurovision can make you a star in your own country even though you don't win the competition and as you can see snap from 2022 armenia's rosalyn has reached 700 million streams on spotify it's a giant hit radio hit and chart hit all around the world so really really well done for her she has a new single which is also quite nice so i kind of hope that she can continue her career and and to end these videos, I thought I might give you a bit of a song tip, a song that I really like from an artist um, that has participated in Eurovision before. If you follow my channel, you know that I love Marco Mengoni and he has kind of softened the blow of post-Eurovision depression by releasing another album, which is Prism. You can see the cover here. And my favorite song from that album, there are lots of good songs, Pazza Musica with Elodie, for example. But my favorite from this album is La Chame 
Lascia Mi Indietro, which is kind of a solely gospel song, and I love those. And the lyrics are really good too. So check that song out if you want to discover some new music. That is it for me today. This is latest news Eurovision 2024. Subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss the next couple of videos. The next videos coming up are chart update, my summary of Eurovision 1966, I also have a statistics video on which language has done best in which decade of the Eurovision Song Contest. And of course, soon I'll do another latest news update once we have enough news to talk about. Thank you for watching and please subscribe if you want to and I'll see you for my next video. Bye bye.